coming at you. The Starship Trooper from the Great Lakes. Mm. Lake Erie. I grew up so close to Lake Erie, you could walk there in one minute, and it was cold as hell. I'm just saying. Oh, I, I do not miss that part. You know, Nashville has nice, mild winters, and I appreciate that. I uh, hope you guys are doing good. I uh, want to uh, say a little prayer for the people in New Orleans right now. Getting hit by that fucking hurricane. I hope everybody's cool down there. I hate hurricanes, tornadoes, all that shit. Floods. Hope you guys are okay. Man, crazy world. Um, Lord, I had a stressful morning here today. Stressfulmornings.com. Uh, my sweet little five-year-old Leo... Sick as a dog, he puked in the bed, and he, he had 103 fever. We had to put him in a little ice bath, cold bath, just to get his fever down. He's okay now. Got the stomach bug, and uh, but he's okay. But man, it's always something, people. It's always something. I got a little uh, little cover tune happening there for you, Jimmy doing Earl uh, on an old uh, 60 Strat. Uh, but remember that track, Come On, off the Electric Ladyland album? Um, Jimmy did a cover of an old uh, Earl King song from 1960. And, uh, you know, it's funny, like, remember how I talked in the past about, like, how uh, you'll hear a record you haven't heard in a long time, and it just, just hits home with you for some reason? Like, I, when I was out on the road recently, uh, one of the hotel rooms I checked into, you know, sometimes you'll check into a hotel room and they'll have music playing? It had like classic rock playing and I was in there for a minute chilling and uh, that song came on and I was like god damn Jimmy's vocal on that you know I love Jimmy I, I mean I'm a, I'm a huge a huge respect for Jimmy I'm not a super fan like some guitar players are I mean I, I, I have some of his records and I, I really appreciate and love him but I need to uh, I need to get more into that Electric Ladyland album there's some great shit on there uh, the one I always uh, was into was Axis Bold as Love. I, I love all that stuff, man. But Jimmy was a bad, bad, bad boy. Uh, it got the old Strat tuned down to E flat. I love the whole debate that people do about about this is better to have a Strat down a half step, whatever. It's so funny to me. It's every guitar sounds better when you tune it down. It doesn't matter if it's a Strat or not. You can take the worst guitar in the world, and tune it down to B, and it sounds great. I mean. It's like, yeah, of course it sounds better. It's like, but what song are we playing? And, you know, yeah. But anyway, uh, I recently looked on the, the gear page. A lot of people can't believe I ever look on there, but I do. Even though you'll you'll sometimes see a, a, a six-page thread that titled something like Mids, What's the Deal? I still look on there anyway. Um, there was a guy on there complaining about my coffee cups, and he said that the, the beautifully... Brick shit house constructed coffee cups are a little too thick for his lips, and he sometimes spills when he's drinking the coffee out of the cup. There, the well-made, you know, real heavy, solid cup. He doesn't like that. So I'm gonna make a whole line of cups for people with real thin lips coming up real soon here. Um, stay tuned for that. Oh, also, stay tuned for uh, oh, any minute now. It, it could be any day now. They're going to put a single from the Trip the Witch album on CD Baby. The first single is going to be um, a song uh, called Saturn, We Miss You. And here's the thing about it. Guess who we had? It's the only song on the album that has any vocals. And guess who sang it? Fucking John Anderson from Yes. We uh, we sent a track to him, Sweet Dean and me. And uh, and, and he, he wrote this amazing lyric and sang on our pitiful record. The guy from fucking Yes. Is on our record, kids. When I, I swear to God, uh, when I first got the tape back of that and listened to it, I, I, I remember dragging it into the kitchen. My wife was in there cleaning and she wasn't in the mood to listen to music. And I, I just put the phone up and started playing music. She's cleaning furiously. And then as soon as John Anderson's voice comes in, she stops what she's doing and starts bawling. She was like, is that John Anderson on your song? And I'm like, yes. And we both started crying because she knows what it means to me. To have John Anderson on your record. I mean, the guy that I've worshipped since I was a little kid, you know. Anyway, I never got to talk to him. Dean did. He chatted with him, but I never did. But he, he said he was a sweet, sweet guy. And I'm so thrilled to have him on our album. And uh, 
big Yes fan here. I don't know if you knew that. You know, people think I'm a big prog rock guy. And I am, but I've recently realized that it really only is Yes and Genesis that I'm into. I mean, I, I respect Crimson, ELP, and all that stuff, but my two jams are Yes and Genesis. Um, let's see. I got other stuff written out here. I got some, some VCB action for you. Oh, you know, football is coming up. Fall is almost here, and I'm going to watch a little preseason today I'm very excited about. I got a couple hundo on Dallas, if anybody's wondering. Uh, okay, here's a couple questions from the, from the uh, viewer comment bin. Hey, Tom, what are the top five best guitar amps ever made? Mmm, good question. Well, you know, anybody you'd ask would have a widely varying opinion, but uh, I can tell you what I think. Uh, of course, Tweed Deluxe. Of course, the Tweed Basement. Of course, a good proper AC30 like I was just playing through. Uh, and then you could pick any of the blackface amps. You could, you could, in this slot, you could put Deluxe, Pro Reverb, maybe Princeton. That'd be stretching it. I think they're a little overrated, you know. I love a Princeton, but they're not as great as everyone thinks they are. Um, uh, and then the last one would be a 100 watt Super Bass Plexi, like that. Right there. That's, that's my five, top five amps of all time. Um, that little Gretsch back there. Can you see it? That little Gretsch. That's probably my personal favorite amp, but every one of those you hear is not going to sound as good as that one. So I can't really put it on the list. Uh, I got lucky with that one there. Okay. Uh, hey, Tom. Do you ever have guys put a direct box on your rig so they can reamp shit later? Well, only the weirdos, control freak guys do that. It happens once in a while, but... Um, Look, I'm, I'm down with reamping and all that. You know, I realize that some of these early Hendrix records were reamped. Um, it all depends on what we're doing. I think people are a little too precious about things every once in a while. You know, hey, Tom, uh, mind if I put a direct box on your rig, man, so I can reamp re a little later? Yeah, whatever, man. No worries. I'll be out in the lounge getting some coffee. Uh, we have one more here. A guy said, uh, a guy named Mark Barna, he said, uh, in response to the, the video we put up where we were on the bus at Jones Beach and uh, stuck on a bus all day waiting to play three songs, you know, at a festival. And uh, I put up that silly video, which talked about Tony's gam gambling habits and everything. He said, I like the practice sessions, but this tearing away the veil to show guys stuck on a bus talking about nonsense, meh. M-E-H. I hate when people write meh. Oh. Oh, God. Personal pet peeve. Makes me remember the bad side of touring and being in a band. Well, my friend, life is pain. And there's lots of pain in this world. Uh, and yes, it's not all fun and games. It gets ugly out there. Also, remind me to never hang out with you at a party. Ever. Because you have no sense of humor. Dude, calm the fuck down, okay? Thank you. All right, what can I talk about? Uh, let's see. Oh, I should show you this. Let me show you this crazy pedal. I was just using it. I'm going to unplug it. Well, how do I make it not make noise? Okay, let's see. Okay, that crazy uh, fuzz you were just hearing was my all-time favorite fuzz pedal the Roland Biba I had to draw shit on here because it's strangely designed you can't really see what the knobs do when you're actually using the pedal but like a lot of old fuzz pedals it suffers the malady of having a knob on it that turns it on and off so you always forget to turn it off and drains the battery kind of like my old 1973 Big Muff does what a terrible idea. Whoever came up with the idea of putting a power switch on a pedal that drains a battery if it's left on, please, come on. That's almost worse than putting a lock on a guitar case. <laughs> or a side-to-side -side vibrola on an old Gibson. Or a Veritone. Or, what are some other really bad guitar inventions? Um, I'll, I'll get back to you on that, man. 
top five worst guitar inventions. That'd be a fun one to do. I'm in a mood today, guys. Sorry. Um, I think that's it for today. I think that's enough bullshit. Um, thanks for watching the show. Thank you for the continuing PayPal's donations. Sweet people out there. I know there's some bad apples, but you guys are awesome. And I, I'm very happy to have the, the, the viewers that I have on my silly little channel. You guys are really cool. And you always say cool things. And Uncle Larry appreciates it. Okay. Um, oh, here's another pedal that I just got. I've always loved these. You ever heard one of these? The old uh, electromonics frequency analyzer. Unbelievable pedal. It's like a theremin in a box. These are very cool. Okay. I'll leave you alone now. Bye-bye.